Welcome to another episode of the Victory Podcast, driven by Audi. I'm your host, Keely Orr. Thanks so much for tuning in to a special edition of the show. It's another interview episode this week. So excited to finally sit down with head coach Lindsey Gottlieb of USC Women's Basketball. The team has been killing it this season, so I'm really excited that coach took the time to discuss everything that's happened so far. It's an important week for the team coming up. It's their final homestand. They're going to play Utah and Colorado. Avenge uh, their last road sweep that they had. It was earlier in the season so we discuss in this episode how they want to avenge that weekend and show that they've grown uh, from their mistakes and that they've grown over the course of the season which the eye test shows you that but of course they want to make sure that that shows in the win column as well if you like what you're hearing or watching you can subscribe on the usc athletics youtube channel or find us wherever you get your podcasts and if you want to find us on social media victory pod usc is where we're at Uh, we love hearing from you guys that's where we get our questions for our normal episodes so uh, be sure to find us there as well but without further ado let's head into our interview here is coach Lindsay Gottlieb I'm so excited to welcome in our guest for today's episode the head coach of USC women's basketball coach Lindsay Gottlieb coach thanks so much for coming on the show I know you have a lot going on so I appreciate the time appreciate uh, you having me Keely this is fun I, there's so much I want to talk to you about but I kind of want to start from the beginning you know you you upset quote-unquote Ohio State what did you know about your team at that point of the season um, well, going into that game, uh, I, I think having such a big game off the bat uh, was really a big motivating factor for us. It allowed our 30 practices um, prior to the start of the season to have a lot of direction. We kept saying that uh, Ohio State Press is coming or you know, a top five team is coming, and I think we really had their attention and they were locked in. Um, we had a really important um, closed scrimmage against Texas that I thought prepared us. Um, as well as you can be prepared for playing a real game. Um, but you never quite know what you're going to get with so many new pieces. Um, I felt confident in the game plan. I felt confident in our players. But what was cool to see uh, was them really perform on the big stage. I thought, you know, Rhea was terrific. Um, you know, our, our grad transfers, I think, played like veterans in their first time in a USC jersey. And obviously Juju kind of exploded on the scene there <laughs> and had an incredible game off the bat. So, you thought we were. I thought we were capable of it, but to see it on the big stage was um, was new even for me, and that was really cool. The t- the construction of this team is so fascinating because you have uh, Ivy Leaguers on the team, and you have Juju, who's kind of this older than she is freshman. How would you describe the team chemistry and just kind of the the mix of youth and the veteran knowledge? Well, I would say. I mean, I, I know people. You know, kind of sometimes it's cliched and all that, but we have really, really good team chemistry off the court. Um, the, the, they're all for one another. Um, they get along really well. We don't have any issues ever in the locker room, which is terrific. And I, I think it doesn't ensure success, but it can ensure failure if you don't have it. Yeah. Um, so that's a really good thing. On the court, I think the mix has been really dynamic and and really quite fun, and it's continued to grow. So to your point, um, you know, we have players who've who have been through the college game before, you know, notably Rhea, you know, who's now in her third year with us. Um, these Ivy transfers who've played a lot of basketball and they've played a lot of meaningful minutes, but they've never done it, you know, here or on this stage. Um, but their veteran leadership, their humility, you know, the, the idea that they're really competitors and want to win, but they've kind of gotten over themselves in terms of worrying about, you know, anything other than winning. And then you, um, you know, you have all of that around Juju, who is, as you mentioned, wiser than her years um she's you know her game kind of doesn't act like an 18 year old but she's still an 18 year old and so to put that kind of maturity around her is a really neat and interesting mix it allows juju to shine but really allows us to be a team that's capable of winning um no matter kind of what the circumstances, and I think that's what we all care about most. You talk about experience and humble leadership. The first name that comes to my mind is Mackenzie Forbes. She's been described as the glue for this team. How would you describe what she's done over the course of the season? Um, gosh, I don't know if we have enough time in the <laughs> podcast. Uh, the things that I would highlight would be uh, the leadership factor first, right? It's hard to come into a new situation, but every year's new now in college basketball, right? You have to kind of reinvent yourself and you have time in the summer. Um, and she really was a vocal leader right from the beginning. I think it's impressive that she's been a vocal leader, leader in every scenario, right? Like not just the ones in which she's most comfortable. Um, and uh, she she clearly can understand the game of basketball. She can play four positions on the floor and really understands what everyone else is supposed to do. So there's a calming factor there. Mm-hmm. Um, and then just her skill set makes her very complimentary to everybody, right? Like 
she's she's become the secondary scorer in a lot of ways uh, to Juju, but she can play in a two man game situation with Juju. She can play off of Rhea. You know, she can play some point guard. So I do think that glue piece goes beyond just leadership. It's also skill set, um, and she's been really really important for us. She was someone who you coached at Cal that last year you were at Cal. How did you go about you know co- bringing her back to you in a sense? Yeah. Um, you know, when I when I left the women's college game to go to the NBA, I, there was no expectation that I would be back at all, but certainly yeah. not soon. Um, and so when you leave that team and you leave those players, it's really difficult, especially she was she was my freshman. Right. She yeah. was the one who probably needed me the most at that moment. Right. Like other kids are older and into their college career. But I remember thinking part of the reason to make the move to the NBA was so that people like Mackenzie felt ultimately like they can do whatever they want in their life. And I do think she has aspirations of being in the NBA um, or being in a front office. And so, you know, I left saying it's hard, but I want to empower her. Um, Obviously then didn't know she was going to end up transferring to Harvard. She had to sit out a couple years and just really followed her career at Harvard like a fan, you know, like Mm -hmm. a like an interested person who's always in her corner rooting for her. And then when I got the USC job and kind of realized that those Ivy kids have a COVID year that they're not allowed to use at their own school, I'm like, oh, wow, you know, could this yeah. come full circle? Um, and I really didn't want to put very much pressure on her. Um, I, I, when you care about someone and you know them well, I, I wanted her to have her final year the way she wanted it to be. I thought there was a unique opportunity here. I thought it could be really incredible, but I wanted her to come to that conclusion, um, which she did. And it's been really, really neat. I knew she had a skill set, obviously, that was very unique when I recruited her out of high school, and she showed that her freshman year, and I knew she had leadership qualities. But to see her five years later, she's transformed her body. She's grown up. The maturity, like that kind of stuff is really neat um, to see that, you know, with the relationship that I've had for her for quite some time. We knew coming into this season that the Pac-12 conference was going to be a competitive conference. Did you know it was going to be as good as it has been so far this season? I mean, in some ways, yeah. Like, it's interesting even the the teams that were picked one and two, you know, UCLA and Utah are now at five and six as of today, and they could end up yeah. elsewhere. They haven't gotten any worse. It's just that everyone at the top is so good. Um, but I, I can't say I'm that surprised. You know, Oregon State was picked 10th, not by me. I mean, they knocked us out of the Pac-12 tournament last year, and yeah. I knew what they had coming back. Obviously, you know, Stanford's always good. The firepower at the top. Colorado returns everyone from a Sweet 16 team. And I always tell people, well, the kind of six of the teams have sort of separated. The second half of this league is not easy. There's not an easy night anywhere, right? Yeah. I mean, I don't think anyone would want to play, you know, Arizona or Cal or Washington State in any type of postseason anything. Like, there, yeah. there's a lot of good teams. So um, I think the numbers are staggering. You know, the, the number of teams in the top 10 throughout the year or the top 15, you know, now. But I don't think I'm surprised at the quality of play because those of us who are familiar know it's been here all along and this year was going to be particularly strong. When it comes to the second UCLA matchup, the one at home at Galen Center, it was so special. What do you take away from that game? I, it was incredible. I've never seen so many fans like in the suites. Like it was just so cool to see everyone come out and support. Yeah, I, th- I think it's a moment, a day that none of us will ever forget. No matter how much, you know, we hope that there's a lot more for us on the horizon. We want to win championships. We want to have more sellouts. But I don't think anyone will forget that day. I, I-, I stepped out onto the arena before the game started and literally saw every seat full. You know, there were people wrapped around outside hours before the game. It was a magical moment for a place that people said would struggle to get women's basketball fans. Um, And then the idea that it's our crosstown rival, that they were undefeated coming into the game, that they had beaten us two weeks earlier in our only loss, um, and to perform like our players did and come out and earn a win. It was just an absolutely magical day that I think, you know, gives me chills to think about. And I don't think it'll... I don't think the luster will lessen at all over the years because I think it's a moment for us um, here that uh, that we'll never forget. This weekend, you have a chance to avenge the trip you went on after that UCLA game. I, it seemed like in your postgame press conference, you were a little upset about the effort you guys had against Utah. What did you make from that transition from such a high of the UCLA game to the Utah game? I mean, you think about it now, we, it was still so young in the season. Yeah. Um, and we've progressed as a team a lot since then. Um, but that's an incredibly tough road trip, you know, arguably the toughest one in the conference because of altitude and flying yeah. between two schools and the strength of those teams. But the thing that we we didn't love how we came out against Utah, I don't know if that's because we had just beaten UCLA or because Utah's a unique team. And if you're not ready, they'll get you. Yeah. Um, and so I think we've got a lot to work on this week um, in terms of, 
you know, we've had success second time around against a couple teams now. Um, we pride ourselves on being better, learning from the film. Um, but also, I hope that we're a better team than we were, whatever it was, six weeks ago. Um, and there's a, a big challenge in front of us, and we'll certainly use our performance in the mountains as a way to motivate our players, but really just to show how much we've grown. Yeah, going to Gill Coliseum, it's a tough environment. You hand Oregon State their first loss of the season. What did that feel like, and what was the mental— how did you get mentally prepared for that environment? So it's interesting. I mean, our players have been really locked in, I think, as they see— Not the finish line, but sort of closer, like what's at stake. They've really started to understand how much can change in a weekend in this conference. And the first thing was we wanted to make sure they weren't overlooking Oregon to get to Oregon State. I mean, we knew Oregon State was the hottest team at the time in the conference. We knew it was going to be a great opportunity, but it would mean nothing if we couldn't get past Oregon. So I thought the performance on Friday night was really important. I thought we were in a short week because we played Arizona on Monday. In a short week, we were really locked in and we took care of business in Oregon, which then allowed the Sunday game to be so relevant. Um, And they just, you know, obviously had the win against UCLA. I told them, because, you know, only a couple of them had played up there. We were joking about it. Um, You know, in our performance at Stanford, sort of by the end of the game, the Stanford fans were, were dang near cheering for Juju, right? <laughs> like it was because of her yeah, performance. Yeah. And and I, we told him, I said, these Oregon State fans, they're not going to be cheering for us. Let's just put it that way. They are they are impassion, a passionate fan base. They're really locked in, but they love their Beavers and they don't like who's playing against their Beavers, sure. you know? And so we knew it was going to be a hostile crowd. And I mean that in a good way. Like they were locked in. It was loud. Um, I have so much respect for Scott and how much he gets out of his team. They're, they're playing at an incredibly high level. Yeah. So I really liked our focus. I liked that we were locked in on winning. We didn't shoot the ball great, but we were we were really committed to the defensive end. We never wavered, um, and we we made enough shots and we made enough big plays. We crushed the offensive boards, uh, which is big for us. I, I think the team is understanding that um, there's a lot of ways to get wins, and you just got to figure it out. Um, and that we stuck together through a a really loud, um, raucous arena, and, and I was proud of that win. You mentioned the 51 point game from Juju at oh, Stanford. Oh yeah, that one. That one, you know. <laughs> It's so fast. Not not only is it just an amazing feat, but if you look at and you mentioned in the post game press conference, the game she had before the UW game, it was arguably one of her, you know, tougher shooting games for her. And I, I want to quote you because I, I want to get it right. You said her demeanor after that loss is what sets her apart to me more than these numbers. What did you see from her in that yeah. week? I mean, this this whole year with Juju is obviously. I don't want any of us to take it for granted, right? Like yeah. what she's done, her impact on winning, the way she's handled everything, how she's performed. But I see things all the time that continue to kind of amaze me throughout. And that was one of them. And everyone said, well, she had 51 points against Stanford. At Stanford, of course, it was amazing. And it was. But to your point, um, you know, you learn a lot about teams in adversity. And, and, and the Washington game was our you know, first loss where we you know, felt like it was against a team that we shouldn't have lost to. And again, I'm not taking anything away from Washington and how good the teams in our league are. And they were prepared and they won the game. But we, we didn't like our effort. We didn't like how we played. And so that can shift the team, you know, in some ways. It can affect how you approach the next day and the next week. And I thought our players understood that we were going to have to watch a harsh film and we would have to respond to that. And when I walked up and said that to the team, like, this film isn't going to be pretty, I locked eyes with Juju, and she was like, I got you, and, like, bring it on, right? And and for your young star to have that response and not anything else, not finger, nothing else other than how do we fix it and get better, I thought was incredibly telling about her and the team. Um, you know, I've said, told the story as well. She obviously put an extra time on her own um, to get herself ready, um, but she was locked in on the team stuff. And so then to perform that way after that made it doubly um you know, exciting. And I was talking about this with a reporter this weekend, you know, the 51 is going to stand out to anyone. And obviously there's a lot of comparisons and the numbers Caitlin Clark's putting up and all of this. And it's, it's all fantastic for women's basketball, but you have to really know this conference and women's basketball to understand the gravity of doing that at Stanford against the Tara Vanderveer coach team that really understands scouting reports that usually doesn't let your best player get anywhere near their average, um, makes it all the more significant. And the most important thing is that it was a win against the number four team of the country on the road at a time when we needed it yeah. most. Yeah. And that's where as all this stuff, you know, debates and where does Juju stand and all of this, her impact on winning, you know, is the most important thing. She raises the level of those around her. She makes us more competitive on every level. She, she, her teammates 
rally around her. And we have a complete team. We wouldn't be anywhere without the rest of the team either. But I want to make sure that her impact on winning is noted because I think it's it's probably her most important characteristic. What was your thought process as the <laughs> game progressed? <laughs> um, how can we get her the ball in every possible scenario? Um, how do we keep playing defense to make sure we win this game, yeah. you know, and not kind of waste this performance? Um, a little bit of, is this really happening kind of thing all, all at once. Um, but yeah, just tried to stay locked in with everyone and figure out, you know, how to counter what Tara was doing to counter her hot hand and um, continue to put our, us in a position to be successful. And that's, you know, that's all with Juju and the rest of the team you want to do is put them in a situation to be successful and then let them make the magic. When it comes to managing her minutes, what's your strategy or thought process? I think most of the management has to come the rest of the week. Mm. You know, it's it's really, you know, important. I'm a big coach on more is not always more, you know, recovery and days off and strength and conditioning and nutrition. We have an incredible team around our young women and Juju takes advantage of all those things like a pro. I mean, she's in the training room a lot for maintenance. She's in lockstep with our, our, our nutritionist to make sure she's eating enough and eating the right things and with our strength and conditioning coach. In the game, I mean... Look, I, I, we, we wander and need her on the floor. Um, I try to get a rest when we can. Um, I trust her, obviously, to play with fouls. I mean, that Stanford game, I mean, she picked up two fouls, I think, with 17 minutes to go. And I, I joke with people, if I'd sat her down, I, I would have single-handedly stopped the 51-point game from happening. But I trust her, you know, to be able to play with fouls. Um, so you want to manage her minutes but also be, you know, alert to what the team needs at that time and getting her rest when she can, but also understanding she impacts the game in a lot of ways on the defensive end and with the assists and the gravity she draws as well. Overall, something that was so special to – I had the honor of, of witnessing it was at the UCLA game – Prior, there was kind of an alumni uh, gathering, and it was so cool. And I'm going to brag on you because I was there, but everyone was so thankful for what you've done and how much you've embraced them as alumni of USC women's basketball. What does it mean to you to have that support, but also the the effort you've taken to kind of bring everyone back together? Yeah, I mean, I get chills when I think about kind of what this season has meant. And there's a lot more to go, I hope, you know, that we're playing for a long time. But I think one of the kind of under sort of appreciated things is this this bond we have with the alums, how they've embraced us. I think our success and some of the attention that Juju has gotten has rightfully shined a light on the greatest players of all time that played here. Um, you know, Cheryl Miller and Tina Thompson and Cynthia Cooper and Lisa Leslie and the McGee twins. Like we're talking not just the best players in USC basketball history, but in all of women's basketball history. And if it takes a little bit of a resurgence and renaissance with our team now to shine light on how amazing they were, that's really important to us. And I think that's cool. I think how they've all shown up for us every era from Cheryl and her group. I mean, Cheryl bought courtside tickets. She wouldn't let us give them to her. She, along with her teammates and then the younger group, Two um, of more recent grads, like they've shown up for us. They mentor our players. You know, they're supportive of me. It's unbelievable. So the fact that they show love back and say, I I'm appreciating them is like crazy to me. Like they're the backbone of this. And I think it's a really important part of what we're doing here is that um, I think we've we've resurrected the love and appreciation for USC women's basketball of all eras. I know you're in the in the moment and I'm thinking ahead, but this is kind of where, where I'm going here. But there's a possibility that we could host the NCAA tournament first round at Galen Center. What would that mean to you to kind of have that homecoming, if you will? It'd be incredible. Yeah. For those who don't know, in women's basketball, the top four seeds in each region, the top 16 teams overall get to play the first two games at home. I think it's a, it's a unique thing in women's basketball because fan bases, you know, come out for their team. So I think for the city of Los Angeles, for USC fans, for our fan base, um, if we're able to earn that, um, it would be an unbelievable chance to see NCAA tournament action here um, and a great honor for us to try to, um, you know, get to the Sweet 16 on our home floor. But it's a ways off and we hope we get there. And if that's the case, we know Galen will be rocking. Well, focusing on this weekend, the last regular season homestand, what's your message to fans? Come out and see this team play. Um, I think we're playing as well as we have all year. 
Uh, we've got two incredible teams coming in here in Colorado and Utah, two teams that we owe one to, um, but we have a lot of respect for how good they are. And then in particular on Sunday, it's uh, senior day. We've talked about there's a lot of basketball still left to play, maybe even some at home, but it is nice sometimes to pause and just honor the people in your program. And it's so much about more than than stats or starting. It's about the humans in the program. And so we'll honor them you know, before the game, but also after the game in a post-game ceremony in Galen that everyone's welcome to. We get to see a little bit more of the human side. And I, I don't know what else you'd be doing with on your Sunday afternoon than to come um, and, and honor the leadership um, and the seniors on this team, but really to come out Friday and Sunday and, and watch us help us battle for, you know, the, to be at the top of the Pac-12. Awesome. Thank you so much, Coach. Thank you, Good luck Kaylee this weekend me. and thanks for the time. Appreciate it. Alrighty, I hope you guys enjoyed that interview with Coach Gottlieb. Again, so thankful she took time out of her busy week to come to the studio and sit down for an interview. Uh, hopefully you learned something. Hopefully it got you more excited for USC women's basketball. It's been so fun to watch this team this season. They're heading into the home stretch and are obviously hoping to go as far as they can. So make sure you come out and support. Uh, that's what they love and appreciate. So make sure you support the women of Troy. But that's going to wrap it up for today's episode. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'm Keely. I'll see y'all next week.